This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So here we've got a vPython code that will take a white sphere and move it around in a circle. We've set this up in the way we usually do. We create the sphere here, uh, we give it a name, in this case we're gonna call it ball. Um, we then set up a loop for the animation. Um, since this thing is moving around in a circle, its angular position is changing. So it's easiest to just keep track of an angle. We're gonna call that theta. Uh, theta equals zero corresponds to going along the uh, positive x-axis. So we just, every frame, change the ball's position uh, based on the unit circle. We just change it to x getting the cosine of theta and y getting the sine of theta. It works out exactly the same way it does in the unit circle in your math class. And uh, we'll leave the z component at zero. You could change that to you know another function of theta if you want. Um, and then inside the loop, we have to update theta so that it will continue to move along. Since this is set to be true in here, uh, it's gonna run as long as true is true, which is forever. And so it'll just keep moving around here in a circle. Now maybe the details of your vPython code are a little bit different. Maybe you're using uh, uh, forces and momentum to update your, uh, your motion. Maybe you're using some kind of energy or something like that, or maybe you're following a function. But this is kind of a very basic visual, right? It doesn't really tell me much other than uh, the ball is going around, right? And it's kind of hard for me to tell if its trajectory is changing. It's hard for me to tell if there's anything special about the direction it's moving in. This is where the trail and arrow options in vPython come in handy. Let's take a look at those. The first thing we'll do is learn how to attach a trail to the ball. You have two options for how you do this. You can either go into the actual object itself and tell it make underscore trail equals true. So you're just turning on the switch here. That's one option. That will create a trail with kind of some default options. Um, as the ball moves along, it's gonna trace out all of the points behind it, or at least at regular intervals behind it, um, and connect them with a curve object there. That's one way to do it. That's the way I usually do it. But sometimes you might be deeper into the code and decide that you want to turn the trail on at a later point, and maybe you turn it off at another point or something like that. In order to do that, we're going to use the attach trail function. So this is a built-in function where you specify the object that you want to attach the trail to. So let's try attach underscore trail on ball. This is going to have the same effect as our previous code did where we set make trail equal to true. That's kind of the same, there's two different ways of doing the same thing. Again, if you know you want a trail at the beginning, you can just use the make trail option. If you want to attach the trail later, like maybe you let it go, you know, half a revolution or something before you attach it, then you can use this attach trail option. But also when you do attach trail, you can set some additional options. So like the default for the color of the trail is to match the color of the object. So in that case, that's white and white. Well, let's suppose I wanna make the trail a different color. Let's suppose I wanna make its color, color dot green. So color here is an option that I'm setting. Color here is a, uh, is a base, is a bank of values that we're accessing. It knows that green needs to have all of its points in the green column and none in the red or blue columns. Now when I run this, I get a green trail behind the uh, behind the white ball there, which is useful if you've got several objects on the screen and you need to distinguish them by the color of their trails. Um, it'll it'll give them a different color. Uh, you can see the, the 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 trail exists in 3D as well. Again, it's a curve object. It's it's tiny cylinders connected together, so it's got the same kind of shading effect. So it looks like it's there in 3D. Um, you can also change the radius of the trail. So by default, it's set to be some fraction of the object's radius or the object's kind of size in general. Let's see what happens if we set this radius. Uh, let's see, the ball's radius is 0.1. So let's try 0.01. So we'll make it one tenth of the radius. So you notice I don't get uh, any difference there because the default is for the radius of the trail to be one tenth of this thing's radius or, or the, the Y component of its size vector, depending on the type of object that you're, um, that you're tracking. Um, let's see, so if I make this smaller, that's going to make the trail thinner. This one's gonna be so thin we can hardly see it, but you might need that if you've got a lot of trails on the screen. 
Or of course we could make it thicker. If I make the radius of the trail the same radius of the sphere, well then I'm just trailing behind, uh, you know, basically a, a million copies of the sphere there. You can see it's almost like the sphere is getting eaten by the trail because it's, it's overlapping there. Um, but anyway, you could also, uh, you know, set this up to kind of auto scale with this. Let's say you want the, the radius of the trail to be half of the radius of the ball. So then when I run this, it's going to be half that radius, which is kind of cool if you're looking for, I don't know, almost looks like a children's toy kind of ball and, and rod connector kind of thing. Um, now when I change the radius of this ball, let's say I change that to a 0.3. Now, because I've set this up this way, the radius of the trail is gonna automatically scale up to match so that I've got the same proportion between them. That's another advantage to uh, using the attach trail option is because you can set things in terms of the ball because you've already created the ball. Whereas if you're using the make underscore trail option when you create the ball, you don't get to reference its own radius and things like that. That's not the only thing we can change. Let's get this back to a more reasonable radius. There we go. Uh, we can also change the type of trail that's left behind. The default is for this to be a curve. So if I type in type equals curve, it's going to take every point that gets left behind by the on the trail and it's gonna connect those with little cylinders, right? So that it's a nice continuous curve. But you might not necessarily want that. You might want to leave those points disconnected, in which case you just change this to points, hit control two. And now what it's doing is leaving a series of points behind. So you can see this is kind of segmented now. They're no longer connected by, uh, by cylinders. Now, of course, this doesn't do me a whole lot of good because those points are packed so close together. That's where the points per second option is handy. This, for example, I could say that I only want one point per second in the animation. Now, when we run this, you know, it's leaving behind one point each second. Um, and that's one second in real time, not one second in the, in the simulation time. So if you've got some kind of, you know, Euler Kramer time step set up, it's not going to take that into account. This is one second in real time. So this is pretty neat because for example, if my sphere were slowing down as it went around, let's see what happens if we uh, decrease theta step by a little bit each time. Uh, let's try decreasing it by, I don't know, uh, a tenth of theta step each time. Then the thing is gonna slow down with each step. Oh, that's too much, Brian, that's too much. <sighs> Control two. Now the thing is gonna slow down and I can see that in the trail because the dots on the trail are going to get closer together, right? Because each of these dots represents an even time step. Then the dots are gonna get closer together as the sphere slows down. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's take that part out. We'll just comment that out. I can also, let's go back to the curve option. One of, one of the issues that you'll run into is that if you let this run long enough, um, this curve is going to keep drawing back over on itself over and over and over again. Um, it's taking up a lot of points in the visual memory. Eventually that's gonna make the program slow down just because it has to keep rendering all of this stuff. If you only want it to keep a certain number of points in the trail. You can turn on ret retain equals, let's say 20, and it'll only keep the last 20 points along the trail. So you see now my trail has a little end. It, it started back over here, basically it's deleting those points from the curve object there. Let's make that a little bit longer, maybe 50. So here I've only got the last 50 points in the trail. So again, it starts to pull itself along there. So now you've got a bola toss or something. Of course, that effect's gonna be even more impressive when I turn this back to points and set, let's see, our, our points per second. Good value for that I think was uh, one. There we go. Uh, let's turn this down from 50 now. Let's turn that down to just 10 because now what it'll do, it'll show me those points on the screen and it's only gonna take the last 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You see it starts to disappear. It starts to make the points disappear from back here. And so I've got a nice little most recent trail 
of the sphere here, which is pretty cool. All right, so we've taken a look at how to show where the ball has been, right, by adding a trail. Let's take a look at how we can show where it's going. So here we're going to attach an arrow to the ball. Uh, this is this works a lot the same way. We say attach arrow. We tell it we want to attach to the ball. And now I have to do one additional step here. I have to attach, I have to specify what vector I'm attaching this to. So for example, if I want to show the velocity, I have to give the ball a velocity vector, right? These shapes don't automatically come with a velocity. I have to specify that here. So now I can tell it that I want this to tag along with the velocity. What that's going to do, it's going to create an arrow that starts at the ball and points in the direction of the ball's velocity vector. So whatever I change the velocity vector to, I, the, the arrow will automatically change in that direction. So let's see, if this thing has a position of cos theta sine theta, then the velocity is going to have a vector of negative sine theta cosine theta. That's not something you just pull out of your head. It's the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the derivative of sine is cosine. If you don't know that, then don't worry. Just know that this thing will point in the direction that the ball is traveling. Oh, and I forgot this is the ball's velocity. Otherwise, I'm just creating a random velocity vector out there. And so you see now, in addition to the trail, I've got this velocity arrow pointing this way. And I've arranged it so that it points in the direction that the ball is moving. You know, you can set it to be whatever direction you want. If I wanted to make it constantly down, right, I could just make this instead of this vector, I could just make this vector zero, negative one, zero. And now that vector constantly points downward. It doesn't really help me to point it downward, but I'm just showing that as a, as a way of illustrating. You can have these, these arrows pointing in any direction you want. Now, part of the issue here is, and we had this on the previous one, this arrow is really big compared to what's going on in the rest of the animation. And so when we change this back, what I'll also add in is a scale factor. So we're gonna say scale equals, let's make it a half of what it was before. So this is kind of a trial and error process. You see how big the, the arrow is on the screen. You change it to um, a smaller scale factor. It's just taking that vector that you give it and scaling it down by that amount. Of course, you might also need this scale factor if your arrow is not showing up. You may need to make it longer and have a scale factor larger than one. Um, this arrow looks a little bit too thick compared to the ball, so let's change this thing's shaft width to, uh, let's go with half of the ball's radius. I may need to make that smaller. Oh no, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, because that's the width of this thing and the radius is half the width of the ball, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I can change that there. I can also change the color. Right? Let's suppose I don't want it to match the, the color of the ball there. So I can make this thing's color equals color dot red maybe. Control two. And so there you go. You've got your arrow attached here. You've got your trail coming out the back here. And you can have as many of these arrows attached to this ball as you want. So for example, this thing is pointing in the direction of its velocity. Let's have one point in the direction of its position. So we're gonna do attach arrow ball POS, it's already got a position vector, so I just have to reference this one, and that is the thing that I'm changing down here. Um, let's leave the scale as it is for right now. Uh, let's give it color equals color dot cyan. There we go. And again, all I have to do is add that. The position's already being updated. And so there we go. Now you say that doesn't look quite like the position. Well, because that's the vector going from the center of the screen to the ball here. Um, is there a way I can flip that around? I don't think I can, I suppose I can't call this, I suppose I can't put negative position on this. That's, yeah, no, no, that's a string, that Brian, that's not gonna work. Um, what I can do though, is I can make a vector called two origin equals vector negative uh, one, zero, zero. And so I could change this instead of pause, I could call this one two origin and then I can say ball dot to origin equals negative ball dot pause. There we go. Now this arrow is constantly pointing toward the origin. So if you're teaching maybe a physics class and you need this as a, 
as a relative position vector or, or, or negative r hat or something for the gravitational force. It's pretty useful for that. And then finally, if I want to, I can turn the arrow and the trail on and off. Like I can just uh, to totally turn them, totally turn them off. So let's say if theta is greater than uh, pi. In order to do that, I have to give this uh, this trail and this arrow a name. So we're going to call this one trail. We're going to call this one arrow one. We're going to call this one arrow two. And then what I can do, I can say trail dot stop, and I can say uh, arrow one dot stop and arrow two dot stop. So it's going to check for when my theta goes past half of a circle, and then it'll turn all of them off. Here we're coming around to theta equals pi. And there they simply go away. Now the, the, the trail that I had before is still there. So it's gonna leave the trail behind, but it's not gonna create any more. Um, let's suppose I wanted to turn it back on. I can say, okay, we'll do that if it's greater than pi, but if it's greater than two pi, we'll change this to a start. Start, and now we'll watch this thing go around. I might turn the rate up. For this part, control two. So here our, our trail and our arrows are on because we are not yet at theta equals pi. Here we're about to reach theta equals pi. They disappear because we've triggered the part where we turn them off. Then we get back over to here, we'll trigger the part where we turn them back on, like so. So anyway, that's some information about trails and arrows in vPython. Hope that's useful to you. I find this incredibly useful in a physics class. Hey, I made a speedometer. I just realized that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.